So yeah, a few, there's a bunch of important steps. First thing is you want to make sure uh, both objects are sitting at zero of the world and that they have the same pivot, that they are pretty much in the same space, that they basically have, for the most part, a comparable or very similar silhouette. Right? So these are kind of close or close enough. So this is the low res, right? So I'm going to hit Control-1 and isolate this. Export selection. And I'll just export this as, this is a clock, I think, right? So clock low, OBJ export. I usually turn off materials because I don't need any material settings to go out of or come into uh, my, in this case. So I'll hit Control-1 again. Grab the high res in this case, Control-1. So in some cases, right, I let you guys build things however you want to build them. The problem is, is that you may have polygons that have more than four sides. So if any of you had a problem with X normal and it just sits there and seems like it's going to calculate but doesn't do anything, it's because you basically need to go to mesh, triangulate. This is one of the few exceptions where I will say triangles are good. You always want to save a version of your high res that doesn't have the triangulation everywhere. But um, So I'll show you an example of this. So let's say we've got a, just a cylinder. Super boring cylinder. Um, yeah, so let's say I had a polygon like this somewhere. So I'll just have to create it very quickly. I go to fill. So this thing actually is a polygon that has more than four sides, right? It's got, I don't know how many sides, one, two, three, four, however many edges are on the top there, right? Uh, and X normal doesn't like that. So if you have stuff that you've just extruded and cut out and, and you know, beveled and all that, it's it's going to give you errors or it won't calculate. So as a simple way to get around that, you can just simply go to mesh, triangulate for the high res, right? It'll make everything uh, triangulated, but it will make it uh, usable according to X normal, right? So that's what's already been done on this piece or on this whole mesh, which is fine. Um, we'll go to file, uh, export selection again. Uh, there are a few issues. I'm going to bring this up uh, in a second. Um, when it comes to normal maps, um, there's actually a tutorial I've got for you guys uh, that hopefully you've downloaded. But basically, when it comes to normals, the way it, uh, the way it works is that you've got two surfaces. So um, maybe I'll just open Photoshop for this. So I'll show you uh, these images, by the way, the tutorial images. Um, so when it comes to normals, there's a few factors that come into uh, calculation, uh, come into play when it comes to the calculation. Uh, one of them is that um, you know your low and high res, they may be very, very different in terms of complexity. And sometimes uh, there's this thing called the smoothing, right? So in this case, if I look at this clock, for example, you've actually got smoothing happening along this edge, right? So it looks like one continuous surface. But then you've got these creased ridges in the high res. I'm not sure if that's what you want or not, but that will that will be visible inside the normal map. So you have to make sure that you know when you when you set these angles for smoothing, which you can do via the soften harden edge under edge display. So let's say I just take one of these columns. So if I go uh, mesh display soften harden edge, if I set this to be the default is 30. Usually, if I hit apply, I may get a different sort of result in that. Uh, if I go maybe higher on that piece, let me just double click it. Let's say I go to 45 degrees and hit apply, right? I will get a different sort of smoothing result. So you have to actually be in control of what's happening with that surface and know exactly where you want a hard crease to appear or where you want uh, softness to appear, both in the high and the low res. That actually matters quite a bit. So when you export, let's say if you're using ZBrush and you export a mesh from ZBrush, every single face is automatically faceted, meaning that every single polygon is hard edge looking. So you may have to temporarily bring the low res into Maya, do a soften harden or just soften all edges depending on what the object is. So that matters, that's a factor in the normal map calculation because it's looking at not only the, the polygon difference but whether it's high res or low res. Also something I, I tried to mention and I feel like it's coming up in a lot of projects, uh, a lot of sharp edges in the high res need to be beveled. Almost every sharp edge needs to have at least a two edge bevel. Otherwise, you will not see the detail in the normal map. It will not calculate. The reason why, if I show you, uh, I'll just do a little kind of diagram, I guess. Can I 
Come on, Photoshop, you can do it. Make a new document. For some reason, Photoshop is being really weird. What's happening, Photoshop? It's so bizarre. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> For some reason, Photoshop won't allow me to create a new document. That's interesting. Have you guys? Oh, yeah. Th there's been a problem with Photoshop licensing, hasn't there? No? Nobody's had that issue? All right. Well, maybe I'll try I'll try paint. <laughs> My God, I haven't used paint in like 25 years. Um, so basically, imagine this is your low-res surface, and this is the high-res surface. So we're looking at it from a side view, okay? This is a really crappy drawing. The problem is, so the normal map, what it's doing is it's comparing the two surfaces. When you do the calculation, it's comparing the two surfaces. And uh, <laughs> this is so crude. But um, so yeah, if you've got a straight edge, right, a sharp edge, there's nothing there to calculate. There's, there's just a drop off. So you're going to get maybe a tiny line in the normal map. Whereas if you have a bevel that rounds, well now there's actually angle information for the normal map to actually pick up and transfer onto the simplified lower res version, which might be sharp, right? Or it might even be flat. Does that make sense? So if you notice that your normal map just looks kind of plain or crappy, well then you might have to go into the high res and bevel a few edges. So that's something I think I may have glossed over a little bit. I just wanted to bring to your attention. It is in the tutorial image that I posted on the Facebook group. And I also sent a Mio. It goes through all this and talks about all this stuff. Also, if you want to, so let's say there's extra detail that you want to add that didn't turn out. You can also create your own normal map stamps or find some online. I don't necessarily mind that. So you can actually embellish by doing that too. Um, so anyways, that's, that's a factor I just wanted to mention is that, you know, sometimes if you just have non-beveled edges, and I notice this thing has a few edges that are not really beveled in certain areas, so you may not get a ton of detail. So um, like on, on these little areas here. So you'd want to go back to the non-triangulated version, bevel those edges a little bit, okay? So that's sort of uh, issue, I guess, number two. Um, so I think I've already exported this. Let me bring in X normal. X normal, there it is. Now the other thing is that um, what's happening. So how normal maps, normal maps are being calculated is it's a comparison between two surfaces with the low res and its UVs being referred to. So there's the surface normals, which is, you know, do you soften areas? Do you harden other areas? Um, so that's factor one. Uh, and let me import this so there's clock high. By the way, the normals, if you notice, there's actually a smooth, you can actually set the normals to be the way they were exported, average, which basically means smooth, or hardened, which means every single poly becomes visible. In this case, I'm just going to use the exported normals, um, which should work okay, since I've tweaked them myself inside of uh, Maya. So clock low. Now there's also this issue I mentioned, the, the ray distance, the front and rear distance. So what that basically means is that when there's a calculation being done, it's, it's looking at the high-res surface, comparing its distance and depth and all that to the low-res. It's really difficult. You know, I, I sometimes I manually punch in the numbers, and I forgot about this tool in XNormal, but if you go to Tools, right, there's a ray distance calculator. So it pre-calculates. So I'm going to go, let me just show you that again. So Tools, ray distance calculator, you click on that, hit Go. And it compares and it actually measures uh, the differences between the two faces. Actually, it looks like I'm getting an error. I think because I probably need to, I think the low res needs to be triangulated, right? Because you don't have connecting edges. So this is one thing I mentioned too in modeling or I, I want to bring more attention to in the future projects. You don't want to just leave vertices without connecting edges anywhere. So uh, let me grab the low res. I'll isolate it again. Just for me to avoid this issue, I'll just go to triangulate for now. I'll go export uh, selection, re-export the low. So X normal can actually calculate it, but I'll go back and I'll, I'll just undo that. So I'm going to go back to tools, calculate ray distance, hit go. Now it's going to do a comparison and measure the distance between the, the high res, high poly surface and the low res surface. So I let it run for a couple minutes, maybe 30 seconds. In this case, you know what? I'm going to basically say stop right now. And then I can say copy the results. So what does that do? Copy results. 
values copy, I'm going to close this. If I go back to the low res mesh, these values are now updated from 0.5.5. 0 .5. Automatically put in the correct depths and distances. So now when I go to bake this, uh, this map, again, I'm going to do this at the, at the high quality setting, assuming that this will turn out right. <laughs> Hit generate map. And it will now accurately or more accurately generate a normal map. Now, if you still have issues, it's, you know, some areas you see here, there are some problems. Areas where you have overlap, it's going to kind of go back and forth between the overlapping parts, right? So in, in some parts of those clock, like the columns are touching the base of the clock itself. So that's where you're getting some weird glitchiness. That may not matter because you probably won't see it anyways because it's an overlapping area. So it's actually kind of calculating back and forth between two or more surfaces that are overlapping. Um, so we'll let this thing finish up. I'm going to just pause the recording. Yeah, like I said, anywhere where there's overlap, you might get some weird glitchiness. But again, if it's overlapping with two or more pieces of mesh, you probably won't see the glitch anyways. Um, if there's smoothing issues and some stuff looks smooth when it shouldn't and other stuff looks sharp when it shouldn't, those things you have to manually fix by going into Maya and, and going to Soften or Harden Edge or using that quick tool that I like to use, which is Soften slash Harden. Um, so let me just close this. I've got this thing in isolation. Let's go to the attribute editor. Uh, I usually like to use a blend, set it fairly dark, go to bump mapping, file, load the texture map. Should be here. Open that up. Oftentimes I have to set this to raw. So this is under color space, so I'll have to set it to raw which doesn't change anything until you jump out, switches from bump to tangent space. Now it looks pretty good, right? So if I hit control one, let's move this thing out of the way. So remember what I said, some of these details are not gonna show up because they're just flat, because they're parallel or perpendicular, I should say, right? So these, all these details in the clock face just didn't show up. They weren't detectable because there was no bevel. So you actually lost a lot of detail there. So you may just wanna go in and quickly grab those edges where they, they should show some detail and either do a like a simple one division bevel or you can make it more rounded, right? But you know the rest of this stuff does work for the most part, right? I mean this is super angular but that was a squared edge and it looks kind of squared based on the on the map. There's some weird glitchiness in the corners here so again that could be as a result of this the smoothing or that there's such a huge gap so maybe these corners should be should be chamfered the same way as they are here, right? You still have enough polys to play with to do that in the low res. So, you know, it's trying to calculate the angle, but it's too far apart. It's too different from the high res. So this is one of the challenges. Now, one thing you can do for this, you can paint that out. Go to Photoshop and literally paint it. Yeah. So the question is, how many bevels do you need? Well, look, if I just have a simple plane, right? Let me, uh, let me actually make a new scene here. So here's the problem. If we have a plane... And I'll make it as simple as humanly possible. So this will be my low. I'll make a low and a high res plane real quick. Right. So this is my low. I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate and isolate this thing. Add an edge here. I'm going to connect. I'm going to bevel that once. Take this face and extrude it down a bit. There we go. And then maybe I'll just delete the sides here. So the problem is this, okay? Here's the low, so I'm gonna export this. I'll just use the same name as, as I had before, actually, to save on loading this into XNormal. Export selection, uh, well, what did I have? Clock high, so whatever, this is my, oops, I think this is the low I have selected. Clock low, and then I'll grab the high. So this is the high res, right? File, export selection, uh, high. So watch what happens, uh, and I'll set this to be lower and lower quality, just so it's faster to calculate for the demonstration. It's not calculating anything because there's no bevel, because it, it's two flat surfaces almost, right? The original is flat; it can't see the, the the edge. So you've got one of two solutions to this: either take this edge. Uh, if I can isolate this, yeah, let's take this face. Either you take this and scale it in, so it actually has an angle now to pick up. Makes sense? So there's either, either an angle there for it to pick up. So I'll show you what that looks like. 
generate. Oh, I might have to go back. Oh, so now it's picking up the edges, right? Because there's an angle for it to pick up. Or I have to bevel. Yeah. What's the angle for like, for like ten rays like there? The low res has to follow that. If it's an undercut, yeah. and you don't have an undercut in the low res, it won't see it. Okay. You lose the undercut, right? That's right. It's hard to explain when you guys haven't seen it yet. But undercuts, yeah. So if you have something like this, you won't see that at all. You might see the bevel up here. But you won't see that unless that shape is in the low res too, right? So it's literally, it's, uh, it's basically what's known as a, a projection. So the projection surfaces, you're projecting from one surface to another, which means the surfaces have to be extremely close. So yeah, let me bevel this. So I could literally have a bevel of just two segments, right? It could be, or sorry, one segment like that. That's enough for it to show up, right? So it doesn't have to be super detailed. It doesn't have to be super, so your high res doesn't need to have tons and tons of extra bevels all over the place, right? It just needs at least a bevel. Does that make sense? Okay. So let me just redo the, the calculation again. So now I've got, instead of just angling in that those edges, I should probably go back, by the way, and do the recalculate distance thing, but just to make it accurate here. Okay, I think that's good. So go back to baking, generate. So you see now there's uh, areas, again, that pick up in the normal map. So that's, that's kind of what I'm saying. And you can imagine this playing out over multiple, multiple surfaces, right? So, so you got to think about that. Uh, and let me just quickly load this in. I guess I'll uh, assign this a, uh, assign this a, a blend, and I'll do what I typically do, make a really dark blend, really high specular roll off, low eccentric eccentricity, and then load the map. Okay. Our lovely, <laughs> super detailed map here. There you go. So you're at least picking up the bevels, right? That's sort of what's happening there. Again, it doesn't look like much because you're kind of almost like, it's like you're staring straight down the side of the edge. That's sort of what the projection is doing, right? It's going inch by inch by inch, comparing and seeing where it can grab detail. So it either needs a bevel or a sloped edge to pick up that detail, okay? Uh, in some cases, you can just fake it. <laughs> just Photoshop it or paint it in, paint it out. Um, yeah, so. Hopefully that gives you guys a better idea of some of the little issues that you may encounter.